if you've ever wanted to have that vocal swell effect where the line is kind of swelling into itself, this is how you do it. It's great for that eerie kind of creepy sound. It's also great to just have a little transition into the line, build up a little anticipation and excitement going into the next line. But it takes a few steps. So we're gonna break it down step by step. But first up, let's just listen to this vocal in the context of the song. Now what we're really doing is adding a reversed reverb tail to the start of the phrase or phrases that we want to have it swell into. So to do that, what we need to do is start by creating a new track. In this case, I'm just gonna duplicate this vocal track so that I have all the processing on it. So I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate the track. I'll rename it Vox Swell. And then I'm gonna turn off all my bus sends because I don't need it sending to any of my effects. And then I'm just going to use my marquee tool here, which is under marquee tool, to select anything that I want to have this vocal swell effect on. To play it safe, I'm gonna get more than I probably will end up using. I'm just gonna select this whole phrase here, and then I'm gonna hold option on the keyboard and click and drag this down to the new track. I don't need my automation data, so I'm just gonna say don't copy here. And now I have this new track that sounds exactly like my lead vocal, but without Call any. Me effects on it. Now that we have our new track here, the first step is to flip this region. So with your region selected, you wanna go up here and you should see reverse right here. If you're not, that's because flex pitch is on. So we need to turn on flex pitch here or select flex pitch and turn it off for this specific track. And now you'll see this reverse option is here. So now we've just reversed that vocal so it sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> Kind of neat though, right? But that's obviously not gonna give us that reverse swell effect. So to get it, we need to add a reverb to the end of this channel. I'm just gonna do the Space Designer mono to stereo. The sound of the reverb really matters here. So play around and find one that really works for you and fits and feels right in the context of your mix. In this case, I'm just gonna go with a short-ish plate, kind of a medium plate reverb. Let's just go with this 1.2 second plate. And we wanna turn our dry signal all the way down so we're only getting the reverb on this track. Let's listen to it on this vocal as it currently sounds. Okay, we're getting somewhere but we're not yet to that reverse vocal swell effect. Now what we need to do is bounce that track in place so that reverb is printed onto it. We're gonna do that by coming up here to bounce in place. We're gonna to go to track in place. And you wanna make sure that bypass effects is not selected and we'll hit okay. It will take a second to print it out and then we'll just trim anything we don't need here. And it's currently gonna sound exactly the same. What we need to do now is flip it, which will now end up with the vocal being lined up appropriately. But we need to make sure that the actual placement of it is exactly right. So we wanna make sure the end of the word at the last section here lines up on both our lead vocal and our, our swell vocal. Let's see if it's working well. Kind of interesting, right? Now, it takes a lot of tailoring in a lot of cases to get this to sit just the right way in your mix. You could have it where it only is at the start of the phrase, the first phrase, or each time a phrase starts, and you could just have it do a little extra swell in. You could play around with this until it's really right. You could bring it down a little bit. You could add EQ and kind of tailor the sound of it just a little bit so that it's maybe a little bit darker, maybe cut out some of the body so it's a little telephoned out give it something like this of effect. And it's just a little effect. You could also have it a little bit more obvious like you just heard a second ago where it is always present. Now that's all the steps to set it up, but I wanna show you a few different ways that you can fine tune or play with it to get it to sit a little bit better in your mix. But before we do, if you're struggling to get a mix that you're happy with, I wanna give you something. It's my completely free six step checklist to a pro mix that just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have. We've mixed this song with it. I mix every song that I do through this process. It's completely free from link in the description below. So if you're not happy with the mixes that you're getting, please download it. It's completely free and it's really gonna help you out. Let's look at some ways that we could tailor this so that maybe it's not in the way of the vocal and it only comes in and out when we want it to. The most obvious way to do this would just be to use automation. So I could turn this to latch over here and I could just follow with my fader and have it come use my fader to bring it up when I want it to be really obvious. Right, 
right? You can play around with it and really tailor it that way. That's definitely probably the most control. You could also come in here and just really dissect it so that it's only swelling into, it only even exists swelling into the words that you want it to. So like if I just want it to be totally out right here, but then come back in for this little swell right here, I could have that happen and I could really tailor the swell and then I could cut it right after. And you could really just tailor it to be on the words that you want it to be on. That can work sometimes as well. Another thing you can do that can be really cool to get it out of the way of the lead vocal is to set a compressor. In this case, I'm just gonna use the stock logic compressor. And you can have this compressor side chained from the lead vocal. So in this case, we'll just select our lead vocal track. And then you just have to tailor the settings so it's turning down when that lead vocal is singing. So you can make it a little bit more aggressive. You can play around with the attack and release time so that it's releasing in a way that's pleasant. So now with the lead vocal, When she's singing, this compressor's turning this swell down, and as soon as she stops singing, it stops turning it down, that five decibels, so it becomes a little bit more obvious, a little bit more present. So it's tucking it when she's singing. Me at a to three. But like in this little space right here where she's not singing, it's not turning it down. So that swell right there inherently is louder and is kind of brought up. So this can be a really good way to just duck it a little bit when the vocals are singing, but then get back out of the way in the pauses so that the swell can swell in. This can take some tailoring in terms of your setting, but something like this very quickly gave us a much more contained vocal swell that now could potentially sit in a mix without cutting it out. So check that out. So that's how you do a reverse vocal swell. You take the track, you duplicate the entire track or any sections that you want. You flip all that audio, you add a reverb, you print that reverb with a bounce in place, and then you reverse that bounce in place track and you line it up with the lead vocal and affect it and tailor it to work in the context of your mix. Before you go, be sure to grab that six step checklist to a pro mix. It's really gonna help you out. I'd love to hear from you. Was this helpful? Are you gonna use this in a mix that you're working on? Let me know. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time